So for the past couple months, I've actually been using these two right here. And yes, they are a brand new product from DJI. And comparing the prices to the competitors on the market, these are extremely affordable. This is the all new DJI Power 500 and the Power 1000. Whether I'm going out of town, going on a family camping trip, going snowboarding, where sometimes I'll stay in a cabin. And I normally always have a couple of power stations just ready to go because here in San Diego, we normally will get things like rolling blackouts or rolling brownouts, or sometimes a neighborhood or a couple blocks will be shut down for a little bit time high wind warnings sometimes there's fire warnings especially in my area so every once in a while once or twice a year we will normally go out into a blackout or a brownout you just never know when your power might go out and it's always nice to have something that's going to keep things like your refrigerator on or power up things like a microwave or a toaster in case you go down for a few hours. And the one thing that's always confusing, especially when I was looking at these before, was which one do you get? Which one do you really need? Now the smaller of the two, the DJI Power 500 is 512 watt hours, where here the larger Power 1000 is actually 1024 watt hours. And with that size difference, when you're trying to choose which one to get, it really comes down to what types of devices am I going to be using them for? For me, I like to keep a smaller one in the car because I know I'm going to need a backup when it comes down to powering up laptops, drones, phones, iPads, tablets. We're here at the Power 1000, really good for a standard home backup, but also if you're going to be out going camping for a while and you need to power up possibly not only just your devices, but maybe you need to warm up some food, maybe you need a hot plate. And before I go through some examples and show you what types of devices you can power with each one of these, let's just quickly go through some of the main features of these two power stations. Now, even though these batteries are massive, the one thing that's really good about them is that you're able to fully charge both of these batteries up in 70 minutes. Now, one thing I did notice when using these batteries compared to some of the other ones I've tested before, these run really, really quiet, whether you're charging or even using some higher power appliances. Now, we'll be putting these through some tests to show you exactly what you're able to charge on each one of these. And also, there's a couple of things that I really wish that DJI would have added to these power stations, but we'll talk about that at the end. And before we get into those tests, let's just go through some of the main features that we do have here on the front of these stations. Now, when it comes to max output, the Power 500 can actually go up to to 1000 watts of output and here the power 1000 can actually max out at 2200. Now the reason why I have the drones on this table is not just because of the fact that these are made by DJI but these power stations actually have a custom port designed to power up something like the Air 3 or the Mavic 3 a lot quicker than using the power outlets here or even the USB-C ports. When using this port and cable, you're able to charge an Air 3 battery from 10% all the way up to 95% in about 30 minutes. Where if you were to use a standard 100 watt power source, it would take you a little over 40 minutes, about 42 minutes to go from 10% to 95%. And we have the same benefit here with the Mavic 3 battery and this custom port and cord. If you wanna charge a Mavic 3 battery from 10 to 95%, takes about 32 minutes. And if you were to use a 100 watt power source, it'll take you about 49 minutes. Now, of course, taking this on the road, one thing to think about when it comes down to weight, the Power 500 comes in at about 16 pounds. The Power 1000 comes in at about 28 pounds. Now, as far as battery types, these are both LFP batteries, which are rated for about 70% battery capacity after 4,000 cycles. Now, when it comes to the ports on the 500, we do have one SDC or the fast charging port that you're gonna be using for your drones, or if you're gonna hook it up to solar, you would use the SEC port here. And you can also plug in multiple solar panels onto this adapter and charge using the SEC port on either one of these stations. On the bottom, we have the charging port, and what I do like about it is that we are using a standard cable. I hate when companies have a proprietary charging cable to use for their batteries. We have two USB-C 100 watt ports here at the very top, 24 watt USB-A's here at the bottom. We have two of those. And here we have two AC outlets. And if you want to use those, just press that button right there to activate those two ports. One thing that's unique about the Power 500 is that not only are these USB-C ports here good for charging up your devices, if you run into a situation where you cannot find your power cord, this one actually accepts an in. So you're able to use this as a power source to charge the Power 500. We don't have that ability to do that here on this Power 1000. We don't have that two-way USB-C port. We do have two USB-C 140 watt output, which is very good, especially if you're trying to charge up a lot of gear, laptops, you're able to charge up a MacBook Pro 16 inch about eight times comparing that to a standard charger which you'll probably get about three times we also have two usb a ports right here two acs right here on the left hand side turn it on there and here we have the two fast charge we have the two sdc ports 
on the Power 1000. One option on the Power 1000 is that when you are charging it up, you do have the toggle switch here to charge up at 1200 max, or you can go down to 600 if you wanna slow charge this battery. Now, if we talked about solar panels and solar charging, yes, you are able to hook up solar to these panels here. So there's an adapter where you're able to plug in your panels straight to here, and then you would use the SDC port on the 500. The 500 is able to accept up to 300 watts of solar panel. Now here in the Power 1000, we have a little bump up. You are able to accept up to 400 watts per port here on the side. We do have two of those ports, and all you do is hook up your solar panels to this, plug it into the SDC charge right here on this side, and you're able to power up both of these off of solar panels. Now, speaking of solar and charging up the batteries using panels, you are able to do that. You just have to hook up your panels here to a sold separately adapter that you're able to use on both of these power stations. Now, those are the ports here on the front of these stations. Let's put it through some more tests, show you what you are and aren't able to power with these two systems. All right, so I brought out a bunch of pretty standard home appliances here in my kitchen. And just to give you a better idea of how much power consumption is actually being used when you plug some of these in. Now, for the most part, if you're just gonna be charging up some basic appliances and laptops, tablets, action cameras, and possibly like a fan, then a smaller unit like this, like a 500, might work out good for your situation. However, whenever you are using appliances like this, a coffee machine, an oven, a rice cooker, anything like, or even a room uh, space heater, anything that produces heat uses up a ton of energy. And something like this won't be able to, more likely won't be able to handle some of these appliances. That's when you're gonna wanna move up to a bigger capacity battery like the 1000. With that said, let me show you exactly just kind of how much power is actually being drawn from some of these. So I'm gonna use a smaller one for now. I'm gonna plug in my USB-C to a laptop. So I have a little V-mount battery uh, once this kicks in. So now with that V-mount battery, bring this up to 80, plug in the Air 3 battery. Let's see what we get from 90. We're bumped up to 135 or so. And let's also charge up the Osmo Action 4. Let's plug that in here. We are at 89%. So we started about 90, I think 92% or so but letting us know that if we have all of this gear plugged in, then it'll last us. Right now, at this consistent rate, about 240 watts, we should be good to go for about an hour and a half, 96 minutes, plugging in my iPad, charging up a battery, charging up another battery here. Now, like I mentioned, things get a little weird when you go and you start using heat. So for instance, here is a blow dryer. You will see this thing jump up. Now, depending on what level I put it at, let's see how far we can go. Okay, just on, <laughs> this is put on low. Okay, we're on, we're on actually low heat right now and we're on low fan. So just by turning on the blow dryer, I can feel the heat right here. We are at 579 watts now being used. Now, if I were to turn up the heat here, we should see that jump, there you go. Now just by turning up the heat, not the fan itself, just the heat, jumped up to 915, 920 watts being used. Now, if I turn on the higher fan, of course it's gonna use even more energy, more than likely it'll trip this thing up, because like I said, this is a thousand watts max on the Power 500. So let's turn that up and let's see how long we can go before it actually triggers the safety feature in there and shuts off. Here we go. Boom, instantly. And as you can see, it jumped right all the way up to 1800 and then it shut off. So when you're using something like a fan like this and you are trying to use it at max heat and also higher fan, you're gonna be using up a lot of energy. So something like the smaller battery bank is not gonna be able to power up a fan like this at a higher speed, higher heat. Now here I have a small little rice cooker and on the very bottom of it, it does say it takes about 300 watts to, uh, to use. So this should be no problem. If I were to use a smaller battery station here, so let's turn that on. Let's hit on and let's hit 
cook. There you go. It does say 300 on here on the very bottom. If you look at the sticker and the tag, it'll normally tell you what the max uh, wattage uh, usage is coming from the appliance. It did say 300 and right now we are at 300. This one right now easily will power up something like a small little rice cooker. Next, we'll plug in a space heater. So if the power goes out and you want to heat your home and this will jump up right away, 600, 700, 900. We are at nine, we're over the 1,000, 1,300, 14, and there you go. The overload kicks in, safety kicks in. It is a 1,000 max. You're not able to power up something like this particular space heater. You might be able to get a smaller, uh, smaller one that can power it up, but this one does not use it. So let's switch over. So things like that, like I said, that use up a lot of heat, you're gonna need a bigger system like this one right here. So plug this in and start going with the Power 1000 now that we have a bigger system. So we're not even able to see how much was being used because it triggered it and it is on i believe it's on the lower setting so let's turn it to high oh we're actually we're on high so we're on high on the space heater and that's using up so on the low it's coming down to 900 but on the high it's going to be about 15 i think it was at 1500 1500 watts using a space heater like this push it up to 400 30 minutes, it's just gonna preheat uh, for the sake of the test. Hit start and we'll see how much that uh, is gonna use. Again, it's producing a lot of heat. It's gonna use up a lot of power. And the great thing about the Power 1000 is that this has a max output of 2200 watts. So the oven is in preheat mode and it's using up 1600 watts. The sticker on the back actually does say it takes up about 1700 watts watts of power so we are hovering right around that 1600 almost 1700 watts and because of the fact that this can take up to 2200 watts of power then we know that the oven will be able to be powered on with this battery system here not this one here now we know it'll power up the oven let's see what it's going to take for us to trigger this thing and overload it so let's plug in the fan that we tried earlier okay we're at 1700 right now 2100 so we're at 2100 and it's on low so what i'm going to do is i'm going to crank this up to higher heat let's see what happens when you cross that 2200 okay we crossed 20, 2400 2500 we're at 2500 right now i don't anticipate it lasting that much longer so let's see how long we go at 2500 okay i'm hearing beeping <laughs> Which one's it coming from? This one? No, nope. I am hearing some beeping. There you go. So it just shut off, overload kicked in. I was using 2,500 watts. It's rated for up to 2,200. So it did give me, I don't know, about 10 or 15 seconds worth at 2,500. And finally, the most important one that we're gonna wanna keep fresh is this right here. How much power does something like my fridge draw? So what I wanna do is see how much power this actually takes up when the compressors turn on. And let's hook up an extension cord because I can't bring this all the way behind it. All right, so the fridge is now plugged in to the Power 1000 and it's gonna be fluctuating because the compressor is gonna be going on and off, on and off to maintain the temperature inside of the fridge. Right now it's at 25 watts let me actually open this up and we'll see how much power it's going to need to do to use in order for it to kick back on so just by opening up the fridge as you can see here the watts is at we are using 582 watts and it's kind of stuck around that right now and it's also letting us know that we have about 75 percent battery life 72 minutes remaining however that's because we have everything open at the moment and it's gonna be fluctuating. So it's gonna kick on, when it kicks on, it'll jump up in usage. And then when it's maintaining its cold temperature, of course, that'll drop all the way down. Now it's dropping down to 46, 20. Just gonna go back and try to maintain the temperature in the fridge, which means it doesn't have to be powering on all the time. And just by it dropping down, now it says we have about five hours or so on this battery pack if we were to stay at that output rate here. But the one thing I did notice that I saw on some of the other power stations that I do have, which I wish DJI would have put on these, and that would have been some wireless chargers here at the very top. Also, one thing I did notice missing from DJI is the ability to monitor your batteries 
with an app. So I would have thought that there would have been a full app for these power stations, but there isn't. So I'm not able to monitor whether it's the temperature of the batteries. So I'm not sure if DJI is gonna be creating one for the power stations or not, but it would have been nice to monitor through the app or make any adjustments to how much input or output I want on these systems. And there it is guys, a couple new products from DJI. They are not just in the drone space and the camera space. We now have full power solutions. If you're in your office, you want off-grid power supply, you want van life, you want to be able to power almost everything in your house as far as your refrigerator, some basic appliances. You're gonna want something like this, the Power 1000. And then for me, a lot of times when I'm just on the road, and I wanna power up all my devices, my drones, as well as my laptop, and tablets, and phones, the Power 500 is perfect for those situations. And of course, if you guys are interested in these power stations, the links will be down below in the video description. As always, if you guys got value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Ultra Sasio with flightpath.com. See you guys in the next one. Take care.